Okay, so apparently I'm a complete idiot. Yes, we're live. Hello. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Um, sorry for some technical difficulties there. You know, apparently I'm less than an efficient streamer yet. God. <sighs> yeah, it's great. It's great. Hey. All right. So, um, now I guess the question is, since I'm live, can anyone hear me? Because it's saying something like the audio stream's current bit rate is zero. So I'm just checking in with the chat. Yeah, you're guessing technical issues. Yeah, you're right, CL. Technical issues, more like stupid issues. I wish. Um, yeah, I, I wish that I could say different. So anyway, oh well. You can hear me. Yes, excellent. Good. That's what I like to hear. Okay. Good. All right, good. Okay, everything seems to be okay now. Okay, hello everybody. One day, someday, I'll learn how to stream and not make a complete muck up of it. Cause, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, welcome. So, uh, very briefly, if you did not see my previous live stream, I'm looking to potentially do this as a weekly kind of thing. And basically, I'm going to be checking out a different title. My members on YouTube are I'm just throwing a whole bunch of titles at them, and they're voting which one they want me to check out. Uh, this week, it tied between Reincarnated as the Piggy Duke and Fushi no Kami. Kind of flipped a coin and ended up with Piggy Duke. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that's, I'm going to be checking out what is the publicly available preview of it. Uh, maybe someday if I'm as big as a VTuber, they'll let me read more. But until that day, the publishers at least are being kind enough to allow me to read at least the previews without coming after me with, uh, copyright strikes. So, hey, it's, it's quite nice of them, especially since, um, well, I've let some of them down recently. I have a bunch of stuff that they sent me to review that I haven't gotten to yet, and uh, I'm taking my sweet love and time on it. So, much apologies to Morgana and Tomo. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there. It's just it's taking me longer than it should. Um, okay, so uh, basically, I'll read the synopsis, then we're going to read the preview, and then we can chat a little bit about it and see what we think. Um, yeah. All right. So here we go. Okay, so reincarnated as the Piggy Duke. This time I'm going to tell her how I feel. Volume number one. Now, uh, this is the Kobo website. They are not an official sponsor of this video. I'm just using their site because, well, I just kind of like how it lays out the preview. And for some odd reason, when I compared previews that were on different sites, Kobo seemed to have longer previews than a bunch of other sites. So I thought, well, I'll just use Kobo. Uh, you'll see that it's $8.59 Canadian, because I'm in Canada. So if you look this up on Kobo and it's a different price for you, that would be why. So uh, let's check this out. This is by Rhythm Aida. And uh, okay, so the synopsis. In the popular anime Shuya Marionette, there is a character whom everyone looks upon with scorn, the so-called Piggy Duke third son of Duke Denning and a student of Kirsch Mage Institute. This can only spell doom for the current slow Denning who knows he's been reincarnated into the world of the anime as said villain. There is a ray of hope, however. I should have brought water down with me. If he uses his in-depth knowledge of the anime and his unparalleled power as a master of all the elements, surely slow can gain popularity with his peers and change his fate. Perhaps this time, he can make the one small wish that never came to fruition in the anime come true. To become a man worthy of Charlotte, his retainer, and to confess his love to her. Excuse me. <laughs> <coughs> Holy. 
<coughs> Guys, remind me next time. Bring some frickin' water. Boy. <coughs> okay. There we go. So, all right. Let's read this puppy. Preview. All right. Funny story. <clears throat> no, Mirage, I have never read this before. I have no idea what I'm about to read. I only know the synopsis. Synopsis is the only thing I've read about this before. That's the point of these videos, is to pick things that I have never read. So you're going to see my live reaction as I go. So if I love it, hate it, if I'm disgusted by it, or I'm enamored by it, you'll get to see that all live right here on YouTube. All right. Um, funny story. The main, main female on this cover, I thought these ribbons in her hair when I first saw this cover were ears. I thought she was like a fox girl or something. Don't ask me. Anyway. All right. So, contents and off to the race as we go. So, uh, the piggy duke was intelligent, strong, kind-hearted, and sadly, too stubborn for his own good. From another perspective, the story of Shuya Marionette can be interpreted as his tragedy. And this is attributed to the director of Shuya Marionette. So I kind of like already that they're sort of starting off with this, um, you know, kind of making it as if the, the anime was a legit thing. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, anyway. <clears throat> Prologue. A sincere decoration. Decoration. Oh, my God. It's like the freaking first title and I've already like, bah. Okay. A sincere declaration. Okay. You know when Yen On said they were going to do audiobooks? I like messaged them. I'm like, hey, how do you become a narrator for audiobooks, man? They're going to watch this video and be like, thank God we didn't hire this effing guy. Huh. Holy crap. Anyway. <clears throat> when I woke, I had memories of a previous life. I leapt down from the bed and rushed towards the mirror in the corner of the bedroom. Gradually, from within the dark, misty depths of reflective glass, a silhouette came into view. Yikes, I muttered. Reflected back was a figure beyond all imagination, a seemingly privileged, obese young man with shiny, messy black hair. This wasn't just an obese man staring back at me. It was one big, revolting pig. Now, just as a sidebar, I'm hoping this isn't so much that it's fat shaming or that it's just that because the guy looks like an asshole is why he's saying he's a revolting pig. I kind of get the feeling it's more of the he's an, he looks like a douchebag and that's why he thinks that. <clears throat> Still half asleep and not fully conscious, I studied the bipedal pig in the mirror. My hair stuck to my forehead, slick and sticky with sweat. It was simply awful. My face twisted into a haughty, taunting expression. To be blunt, I really looked like I had no friends. Period. This was the look of someone who would abuse his wealth and influence to get his grubby hands on a girl, snorting like a pig. i definitely recognize this face anywhere. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I'm reincarnated into the world of Shuya Marionette? After all, this was the face of the scorned character from that super popular, extremely famous anime, Shuya Marionette, which had trended everywhere immediately after it had aired. The fantasy anime was about the brilliant school lives of the students at the Kirsch Mage Institute, complete with cute girls. It featured the classics, swords and magical combat, as well as an assorted cast of monsters including orcs and dragons. The plot went something like this. A young nobleman blessed with talents in fire magic enrolls in the Mage Institute, befriending girls of the school along the way, even as he's looked down on for his eccentricity. From there, he proceeds to tackle the girl's personal troubles and goes on to resolve a war between his country and hostile nations. Basically, it's a hot-blooded, action-packed anime. As for why I was reminiscing about the details of the anime, well... I was a dedicated fan of Shuya Marionette in my previous life. 
having followed it religiously. But still, why? Just why? I didn't want to believe this was real. I wanted to deny that this was my reality. After all, why did I have to be the piggy duke? The cast is filled with way better options. Someone like the protagonist, for instance. Born to one of the great noble families of the country of Derek, the piggy duke Slow Denning. I love how they name him Slow, but S-L-O-W-E. <laughs> In the anime, was the third son of House Denning, the family of wind. The guy ticked every box for a person to frown upon. He was arrogant, conceited about his noble upbringing, extremely obese, and the closest a human being could get to being an orc. In the end, even his own family drove him out and disowned him. To compound on that bleak future, his secret crush joined the ranks of the protagonist's harem. His own father even told the poor kid that he was originally picked up from a dungeon. Jeez, so my crush is doomed to wilt away forever unrequited, huh? Though only despair awaited me in my future as the scorned piggy duke, my face looked as if I didn't have a care in the world. I stood there nonchalantly in contrast to my inner turmoil. I lightly slapped my flushed, plump cheeks, which were extremely soft and pliant to the touch. Honestly, I never thought I'd see the day when I would find my face so ugly. It had been my best friend for 16 years. Uh, now that I'm getting a proper look at myself, I really am an absolute mess. The pig in the mirror twisted his face into a look of torment. Wait a second. All of this means that... I spoke aloud to myself as my memories and experiences laid the current situation out crystal clear. I basically know the future of this world. That's right, I had information of the future from the anime, and from theories thrown around on forums. I knew exactly how everything went up until the so-called protagonist saved the world. In other words, the world was my oyster. I could do anything. The situation was perfect. Except... I sighed deeply as I eyed my flabby stomach and pinched it on reflex. Yeah, I feel you, kid. With this kind of body, calling it an absolute mess doesn't even begin to cut it, I muttered, staring at my unquestionably unacceptable figure. My life has to start out difficult, doesn't it? The god who planned this is so mean. If you had to reincarnate me as someone, you could have given me an easier time by choosing a better character like that guy, the protagonist of the anime and all. No matter what I planned on doing from now on, going on a diet and thinning down would be my absolute top priority. Even if my pajamas had cute little piggies sewn on them, they did nothing to hide my terrible figure round as a barrel. Stand by. Thank you, sir. I had water delivered to me. This is one of the perks of having children. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Not only that, but I couldn't even lead my normal day-to-day -day life properly if I remained so hated. Considering Slow was dubbed the biggest problem student in the entire history of the Institute, I'd acted the part of the self-centered, black-hearted Piggy Duke in my life up until now. It hadn't been without reasons, and I'd been convinced that the act was absolutely necessary. But now, with knowledge of the anime, I could become anyone I wanted to be. Up until this point, I'd been the scheming, black-hearted, most infamous problem student of Kirsch Mage Institute, but from now on, I could protect her, the girl who was so precious to me, and return to my glory days back when they heralded me as the prodigy of wind. I'll just take a second. Hello, everybody. I haven't really said hi to everybody, so here we go. All right. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> I was grinning to myself at the thought of such a bright future when suddenly a knock sounded from the door. Who could that be this early in the morning, I thought as I moved into the living room from the bedroom. I snorted as I heard another knock. Master Slow, are you awake? I've brought breakfast. A clear voice, pleasant and familiar, reached my ears. It was her. I'm up. Please come in, Charlotte. Okay, my retainer chimed back, dragging out her last syllable as she entered the room. My heart thumped in my chest. I inhaled sharply at the sight of her. She's so lovable and adorable. G good morning, Sh Charlotte, I stammered. Don't look at me. I'm some sort of weird diehard otaku. I can't help it. You're just too darn cute. All the girls in Shuya Marionette are really cute. Good morning, Master Slow. There stood the personification of a goddess of snow. No, the fairy of snow herself. Her waist-length silver hair glimmered under the light. She wasn't wearing the cute Kirsch Mage Institute uniform, nor did she wear a frilly maid dress. Instead, she wore a slightly less fashionable uniform fit for a retainer, which emphasized her earnestness. She was well-proportioned and her posture oozed elegance. She adorably kept herself busy, preparing breakfast with utmost concentration, but you could tell that the natural, noble aura around her clashed with her retainer status. That couldn't be helped, though. Charlotte tried to keep it under wraps, but she was actually a member of the royal family from a destroyed kingdom. In other words, she was a princess. Master Slow, you managed to wake up on your own today, I see. Oink! I snorted in agreement. Oh, God. Please tell me he doesn't snort through the whole thing. I'm going to be really like, no. No, 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 no. Please don't oink all the time. Uh, Charlotte was also the secret crush that the protagonist stole away from me in the anime. I plopped down into a chair next to the expensive-looking table. There, I watched Charlotte ready breakfast with practiced efficiency. It was a little strange, though. I experienced this every single day. Why did it feel so fresh and new all of a sudden? Please wait a moment. I'll prepare breakfast now, Charlotte said as she placed a water pitcher and food onto the table with ease. It appears stew is on the menu for today. Stew? First thing in the morning, I replied. I get fat. What are you saying, Master Slow? It's a little too late for that, isn't it? Charlotte quipped back. True. Oh my god. Wow, Charlotte's like, not holding any punches, eh? <laughs> Damn. As I watched my retainer carry out her daily routine, I thought about our first meeting nearly ten years ago. Charlotte had nearly been sold off as a slave in an auction held deep in the forest which covered half of my father's territory when I, the Piggy Duke, had saved her. When she was young, Charlotte had been extremely grateful and felt indebted to me. As she spent more time with the anime protagonist and got caught up in the war against the Dustor Empire, however, she slowly grew distant. All of these events came to a climax one winter's day near the end of our third and final year at Kirsch Mage Institute. The anime protagonist rescued Charlotte from her plight at the last second, after which she joined his harem. In the anime, I'd realized that Charlotte was slowly but steadily falling for the protagonist. In response, I had poured blood, sweat, and tears into winning her back. It was all in vain, however. I ended up being a laughingstock as one effort after another came to naught. Based on all of that, I, the Piggy Duke, was the absolute worst character. Despite all that, I stood at the top of all character popularity rankings for Shuya Marionette, unbeaten by a mile. Leave it to anime fans, eh? They're just like, yo, no. Nah. <laughs> okay. It sounds like a bad April Fool's Day joke. I am unbelievably obese, a piggy, and a lazy bum leading a self-indulgent lifestyle that anyone 
would compare to an orc's. There were three reasons for the anime Piggy Duke's dramatic popularity. First and foremost, nobody liked the anime protagonist. Nobody felt like the guy deserved his harem. All the girls in Shuya Marionette were gorgeous after all. It was only natural that the viewers would be jealous of him. And honestly, if he's like any other anime harem protagonist, he's probably as vanilla and boring as hell, but that's a whole other thing. Master Slow, breakfast is ready, Charlotte called out to me. The stew might be a little hot, so please make sure to blow on it a few times before eating. Without thinking, I gave a snort of affirmation. Oh my. That sound came out of my mouth. Sometimes this weird pig-like snorting sound would just burst out of me. I couldn't control it. That was a minor detail, though. Nothing to worry about. Oh, I'd be worried. You endangered. Slow. Oinking and snorting ain't gonna help you at all. <laughs> As I was saying, the second reason why the anime Piggy Duke was popular was all his hard work behind the scenes. Charlotte's identity was a well-kept secret until the end of the story. Too well-kept. This was all thanks to the anime Piggy Duke who fought tooth and nail to protect her. In the anime, Charlotte's identity as a princess made her a target when it came to the hostile empire. The anime Piggy Duke fended off many assassins night and day behind the scenes. Nobody knew of his efforts since he kept his lips zipped, resulting in the anime protagonist stealing the poor Piggy Duke's limelight without lifting a finger. Okay, I'd hate that protagonist too. In the end, I never told her how I felt in the anime. It was only later that the creators revealed that only I had known of Charlotte's identity as a princess. My anime self had been scorned and despised, but fought selflessly all on his own. His tragic nature really appealed to the viewers, and they loved me for it. To be honest though, even orcs would probably discriminate against me based on my piggy appearance. If I ever did confess to Charlotte, it'd probably go as well as pouring gasoline on a house fire. That is to say, horribly. As for the last reason that the anime Piggy Duke was so popular, Charlotte, I can't thank you enough for everything. Oink! Oh my god. Huh? Charlotte widened her eyes, dumbstruck by my words. In her shock, she dropped the tea tray she held with a loud metallic clang. Uh, I am so sorry, Master Slow. Charlotte hurriedly began to gather the broken shards when I can't cut in. Please, don't worry about it, I said. Oh, wind, play a little trick for me. Little wind dance. Charlotte looked at me in surprise as the shattered pieces on the red carpet gently floated in the air, dancing as they gracefully twirled. There was also a secret backstory that the creators had revealed. I, the Piggy Duke, was the mage most beloved by the spirits in history. The season was spring. The brisk, pleasant weather had just welcomed fresh students with open arms. The black-hearted Piggy Duke? No, I was now 16. One year had passed since I'd entered Kirsch Mage Institute. In this short span of time, my infamy had spread throughout the entire school and beyond to the other nations. None of that mattered to me, though. It's a little late, but I began. Morning, Charlotte. My retainer, Charlotte. No, Charlotte Lily Huzak, a princess of a ruined kingdom. Good morning, Master Slow, Charlotte replied, bowing her head in greeting. Watching her... I swore a solemn oath to myself. This I swear to you. Even though I wasn't able to accomplish this in the anime, I will become a man deserving of you. Chapter 1. The Problem Student of Kirsch Mage Institute. Time to take a sip. All right. <clears throat> It was roughly before the storyline of the anime, Shuya Marionette. I found myself in a period I had little information on. Before me stood Kirsch Mage Institute, the stage for the anime. There, trees lavish with fresh green leaves surrounded the venerable school buildings built of stone. 
Only one thought was on my mind as I felt the cool early morning breeze brush up against my skin. You pig! You pig! You utterly hopeless pig! All I felt was anger and exasperation towards my past self, the black-hearted piggy duke. The cause of my anger? Figuring out exactly why I'd become so obese. Why had I acted in a way completely unbefitting of a nobleman, inviting the scorn of those around me? This had all been intentional, all according to plan for that black-hearted piggy duke. Oink. Oh, oink. My snorting came out irregular, my breathing erratic. Dareth was often referred to as the Country of Knights by his neighbors. Within Dareth, House Denning was one of its most powerful noble families, having been bestowed control over the country's military force by the royal family itself. A person born to House Denning would never be allowed to marry a common retainer, and so my past self plotted to make everyone hate him and to sully the dignity of the house, which would lead to his family disowning him. I was appalled at my past self's outrageous plan. The whole point of this scheme was to run away with Charlotte after being disowned and live happily ever after. Of course, my, my past self's dream would never come to fruition. I now knew very well that my beloved would be stolen away by that protagonist. Oh, oink, oh, oink, oh, 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 oink. Sweat poured down my face in buckets as I jogged in the sports grounds, which were otherwise deserted in the early morning. Ugh, my clothes are so sweaty, and I'm probably going to trip over my feet at some point. This is pure torture. How little did the black-hearted piggy do? I mean, me. Just how little did I exercise? How did I even think I had a chance at Charlotte's heart in such horrible shape? Hey, look over there. The Piggy Duke's jogging first thing in the morning. The Piggy Duke? Jogging? In the morning? I haven't seen him run a single time this past year. Oh, wow. You weren't kidding, huh? He looks like an orc being roasted alive with how red he is. Shush. What are you going to do if he hears us? Don't forget, even with that getup, he's still from House Denning. Cheers and mockery filled the air as students heading from the dorms to the dining hall spotted me. But I kept on running, swinging my arms for all they were worth. This had been the goal of the black-hearted Piggy Duke's persistent self-fattening, even among all the ridicule. I needed to be made fun of and looked down upon by my own countrymen. Within the prestigious house Denning, I was heavily doted on by my father, the current Duke Denning. Not to brag, but my talents were indeed extraordinary. No one else within my long family history could measure up to me. Due to that, I received special tutelage for as long as I could remember, all in order to whip me into shape as the Duke's successor. Hey, is that you-know-who? I'd heard the rumors, but I've never seen someone that fat. Are you first years? That student over there is the most infamous problem student in the history of Kirsch Mage Institute, Slow Denning. If you want to live out your life here in peace, you should stay away from him. However, this all changed when I turned six. I'd found an illegal slave market held in the woods on House Denning's territory. There, mischievous wind spirits told me the sad truth of a young girl lined up on the altar. I learned that the malnourished girl before me was the princess of a destroyed kingdom. I found out about the tragic life that had reduced her to slavery. I saved that girl, Charlotte, whom I appointed as my personal retainer. A few years later, I made a choice that I knew would change my life forever. Become the black-hearted Piggy Duke. Ugh. That's the Piggy Duke over there. I'd set it upon myself to transform from the brilliant Denning heir into a spoiled brat. Oh, thanks, Pillbox. Leading an unhealthy lifestyle and demanding preposterous things. Boy, was I successful. I'd evolved into a vile piggy without a hitch.
Now that's the end of that preview. So, hmm, the Piggy Duke. So let's uh, let's chat a bit. I'm gonna close that and uh, switch back to the old full screen and see how things go that way. Um, take a sip of water because you know, there we go. Um, <laughs> This story is cute, but a little ugly and gross on a visceral level. Really, Pillbox? That's interesting. Um, like, I mean, <laughs> Oink reminds me of Gollum talking to himself. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, so, yeah, like, I kind of, like, I'm not into the whole, like, fat shaming aspect, but... Even like the comments from the other kids that they were making there, it it seemed like it wasn't just that it was because he was overweight. Like you know what I mean? Like it was also it also seemed to me like part of that was because he is such a ass. Like I mean you know, like People, I think, see you not just for how you look physically, obviously, but they, you know, you just, you look like your actions, right? So, um, I, I but you know what? I do find it kind of interesting, though. Like, uh, I, I like that there's a little bit of a twist on it that the protagonist, that the main character, I, I like, I, I'm going to call him the protagonist because, I mean, it's his story, but then he talks about the protagonist in the story. But anyway, um, the thing about Slow that I find kind of interesting is this sort of fact that even if he was wrong, even if he went about it wrong, uh, the fact that he actually was coming up with a plan to try and be with the girl, you know what I mean? Like he he was he he realized that because of his station in life, it was going to prevent him from being with the person he wanted to be with, and so he decided, well, you know what? Even if it's going to be bad for me, or even if it's not going to be as easy for me, I'm I'm going to have to. I'm just going to let all of this go. I'm going to let my body go. I'm going to let my behavior go. I'm going to let my reputation go. I mean, that's some pretty like deep affection for a girl uh and i have to say that i'm really over harems i mean i'm sure there's probably going to be harem-esque aspects to this story like i'm sure there will probably be other girls that will appreciate him um but i i really think like this is a right from moment one he's all about this one girl and i really hope it stays that way because I think it just would basically be like I'm taking a big dump on the whole story otherwise. I mean, his whole motivation, not only for initially becoming the Piggy Duke, but now for trying to become better and overcoming that is all based on this one girl, right? That, like, at least I give it credit for doing that. You know, it's setting it up as like a one girl romance thing right from the get go. And I don't think that there's, I, I can't see the author successfully pulling it off that turning this into like one of those harem things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I, you know, uh, I mean, as far as it's an isekai, I mean, you know, and like it sounds as if he's quite powerful magically obviously uh but the fact that it's starting off with him in such a bad place physically socially and everything else i mean it takes a lot to improve your reputation i mean we've all been in school right oh my god like it doesn't take much to have your reputation go in the shitter and it doesn't take but it takes a hell of a lot to get it out. You know what I mean? Like, super, like, yeah. Um, yeah, so. 
it is kind of an interesting way of kind of downplaying the OP abilities of the character. Um, it's kind of like, um, like Berserk of Gluttony, um, where it's the same idea. You have the main character set up as being OP and he has this OP ability, but then you set it up with all of these penalties and ways that basically he gets reset. So he's not really, you know, he's not, he's not able to become ridiculously OP right out of the gate. Right. Sounds kind of like the same thing with this guy, right? He can, he's powerful. Obviously he's got powerful magic, but you know, where he's really in the dumpster and where his life as a dumpster fire is going to take effort to fix. Um, Mirage, uh, yeah, okay. So, yes, it looks like he's not romantically interested in other ones. Oh, he befriends some guys, too. Good. I like that. I like when there's guys. Um, you know, like, it's the same thing. Like, I, I, I've liked a lot of books with female protagonists because I feel like the relationships actually some often are a little deeper. Uh, than a lot of the OP male harem type stories. Uh, but this one, him being really just focused on one girl and kind of just seeing everybody else as like a friendship kind of thing. Like I could see that being decent. I could see that working out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. I think that would be okay. So, I mean, it sounds like some of you who have read it, uh, it looks like, some of you are into volume three. I guess uh, J Novel Club just released the second one. You can buy it. For, you can buy the second one complete. Uh, but I guess they've probably started the third one on their pre-pub if you're a member of J Novel Club. Uh, so it sounds like uh, some of you are into the third volume and it's still fairly okay. That, that kind of is the gist that I'm getting, which is which is cool. That is good. I'm I'm glad to see that it's not going to crap. So, because, you know, yeah, you really got to, <laughs> oh, man, you really, some of these things go down the tube so fast. Wow. As I said, like, I could maybe do without the, like, I wish there was a little clearer about not being about fat shaming. Like I said, my gut instinct and sort of how it's written, it makes it sound like it's more because they see him as fat and disgusting because he's a disgusting person. They may not see him that way, even if he was obese, but a nice person, a good person. I don't know. I hope that's the way. Cause yeah, otherwise it's just kind of uncomfortable to me. Um, and it's not just cause I'm older and overweight. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Um, yes, I've read the first volume of Ascendance of a Bookworm. I should really, like, I should really read more of it. I've actually been, um, I've been thinking um, that I want to do more, like, live streams like this to do a little look at the first volume of a series. Uh, you know, you guys can do some feedback, like what you're doing in the comments right now. And also, you know, I can just get a feel for, like, hey, what's it like? You know, let's see. Um, this one strikes me as kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if Kirsch Mage Institute is going to be any more than just sort of like a generic magic school, like every other magic school in most other light novels, except for maybe Seven Spellblades, which that magic school is like the hell of magic schools. <laughs> like, 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 damn. But yeah. that <laughs> Anyway. That's that's kind of funny. Um, so that is reincarnated as the Piggy Duke, the first uh, prologue and first bit of chunk of chapter one. So we can see that our main character has decided that you know the root of being intentionally obese and a stain on his family is not the route to success. So instead, he's going to try something different. Which I you know I'm I'm kind of curious to see how he's going to avoid her falling for the protagonist. You know what I mean? Like, um, that would be one thing that I'd be curious to see just like, because I mean, it's not enough just to lose weight and 
not be a dick. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, there's going to have to be something more to it. That's my take on it anyway. Anyway. Um, yes, yeah, Spellblades is very cool. In fact, uh, that is a series that I want to keep up with. Um, anyway, that's... Uh, so, for reviews, um, I'm going to try and review the stuff that I have which I have actually quite a number of ongoing volumes. Uh, I have a couple of volume ones. Um, I don't know if they're watching this live stream or if they'll ever watch this live stream, but apologies to Tomo over at Kodansha and Morgana over at uh, Yen On, who have sent me a number of really awesome things and I have been very slow and shitty at getting content made around them. I'm not abandoning it. It's just taking me longer than than what it should have, honestly. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my... <laughs> that's kind of that. Um, I am hoping to make these live streams a little bit more of a regular thing uh, because not only is it a good way to kind of get some feet wet with different light novels and kind of bring them back here to the channel. But also, um, you know, I'm actually starting a new job on Monday. Um, I guess I'll talk a little bit, uh, just, you know, I don't want to turn this into a super long stream, but I'll talk a little bit about how, um, there's a few things going on. Um, uh, so I start a new job on Monday. Um, if, I don't know who all knows, but uh, for the last 15 plus years, I've been an ambulance dispatcher. So you call 911, ask for ambulance, either guy who asks you all the questions, gives you first aid, and then makes sure that the ambulance is on its way, provides paramedics with support, all that kind of stuff. Um, on Monday, I'm starting an acting operations manager job at the dispatch center. So it's going to be a little more regular hours, but a whole lot of learning curve and a whole lot of being on call for if there's any emergencies or any stuff going on. So I'm really not sure how my schedule is going to play out and how things are going to go. Because of that, uh, partly, um, I have let the podcast members know that um, I'm stopping the podcast. Uh, I know that's, you know, some of you really like the light novel podcast and I've certainly had fun doing it with the guys, but, um, but something had to give. Uh, I had to find some way of making it work. Um, I, I, you guys don't really know, but, you know, behind the scenes, I was really working CL to death to try and compensate for my not working as hard as I could or should. Um, and uh, she and I had a lot of talk about it. And so I'm kind of not forcing all this stuff on her. And uh, so I'm, I'm just trying to sort of figure out the stuff that I can balance out and obviously seeing how things go with the new job and how that balances out. Um, I just, you know, with the podcast, because there were other people involved in it, I just felt like it really wasn't fair that I, I was constantly kind of pushing things off or that, you know, I, I couldn't make my schedule work with other people's more schedules. Uh, my reading time is, is going to be so substantially cut down now that, I was like, I'll never be able to read enough stuff that we can do the podcast that people want to do and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, I, it's, it's sort of, um, so I just kind of decided like, okay, so I, I just decided I had to let the podcast go. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it took a lot, like, CL's been saying to me for a while now, she's like, look, you know, you got to start making some real decisions about what you're doing here. Like what you want to do on the channel, how you're going to keep the channel going. You've got these people who have sent you stuff and you've not delivered on what you promised. You know, you're got the podcast guys hanging around going like, what are we doing? Um, so yeah, 
So I just I I figured it really wasn't fair to keep doing that. I mean, will the podcast ever come back? I don't know. Um, I don't know if, if the rest of the members will decide to start something or if somebody else will take up that mantle. I don't know. Uh, but right now, I want to make sure that the channel doesn't completely tank. I want to make sure that my family life does not completely tank. And I want to make sure that my work life doesn't completely tank. Um, so part of that, like I said, live streams. It's, uh, it's a great way to sit down and sort of be able to talk and, you know, be able to chat and stuff. And I can just sit down and, and make it happen. Click on a few lights and off we go to the races, right? Um, obviously there's still going to be some reviews. There's still going to be the top 10. Uh, there's still going to be the monthly new releases. Um, but you know, I'm kind of trying to think of some other stuff that I can do too. Uh, because, um, you know, I, I do write, uh, I've been actually working on a short story recently. Um, a writer that I met at Anime North is putting together a compilation, uh, anthology, of basically she wants them to be fantasies with happy endings uh and so i'm working on that right now because i said i would be part of that uh anthology uh, i've got another couple things that i'm working on uh, i've been really really focused on fairy tales lately fairy tales have been like a really big thing for me i don't i don't know man like um yeah, I keep thinking about fairy tales. Like that and but okay, whatever. That's I'm gonna go off on a million tangents if I allow myself to, and you guys are gonna be like, Justice, Jesus. Like, stay on topic. But um But you know, like I'm realizing that um you know, there's stuff that I wanna do and I gotta try and figure out a way to do it. And my son and and then CL herself too. Like they watch a couple of YouTubers. Um, more most recently, well, it's always been Markiplier in our household. Um, and actually, most recently, my son has introduced uh, us to Technoblade, who's a Minecraft YouTuber. Which, I mean, sounds odd, but like this guy is, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. He's like crazy smart in his own way. Um, <laughs> but, but watching him do that, I was kind of like, this is like, I want to be able to have stuff happening on screen, but be able to talk and narrate and, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to figure some stuff out, but I, I do like the live streams and I do like seeing comments and being able to interact with people live in the comments because you know, otherwise, sometimes YouTube just feels like you're talking to yourself in a room and it feels really lonely and sometimes a little creepy. <laughs> and and I and also because I'm trying to not work CL like a horse, um, you know, I, I haven't been bugging her to edit my stuff. So probably some of you have noticed that some of the editing hasn't been uh, as cool as some of the videos because man you know i don't um like like ciel is one of those people that is so crazy at like she'll start a thing and know nothing about it and then all of a sudden she's got like blood splatters across the screen and like silhouettes of people like applauding and like all this stuff and i'm like jesus i've been editing videos for seven years and I don't have no fucking idea how you did that. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it takes her a long time and, you know, she's got her own stuff to try and get done and, and deal with. And, you know, so anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find ways that I'm not leaning on her so much. Cause let's be honest, I'm not paying her what she's worth. And, um, you know, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah, trying to find stuff that I can do that gives some good content that's fun to do and yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we're all oh Aaron, come on. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess we are technically right now. I mean, I'm in this room alone, but at least you guys are all in the chat, so I mean, technically I don't feel as alone. 
there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah anyway um so anyway thank you all so very much for joining me for this um i'm gonna try and keep these it's just been uh, i guess a little under an hour i'm trying to keep these two a little under an hour um but you know thank you so much for joining me on this one uh if uh, uh this will go live as like an actual video on youtube uh once i stop it streaming and um and leave some comments in the the actual comment field of the video just uh what kind of what kind of books would you like to see me do this with uh try and keep it to ones that i have not read because obviously the point of this is like to do you know reactions um and and then so basically what i'm doing is i'm allowing them like youtube members i'm just giving them like a list and saying hey which one should i do so they can decide for me because I'm an incredibly indecisive person. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, now Cross Infinite World, J Novel Club, and Yen On have all said that I can do this. So it gives me a sh crap ton of books that I can choose from. And uh, so, yeah. So, um, so yeah. I mean, just leave, uh, leave it in the comments. Let me know. What do you think? Uh, did you like this? Are you, you think it's cool? You want to see more of it? Uh, in the future, I won't spend like, you know, 20 minutes talking about my life and what the hell I'm doing with it and everything else. Cause hopefully by then I'll have had it figured out. <laughs> um, so yeah, just let me know. In any case, I'm going to, uh, close her up for now. I really do appreciate all of you who came on by and checked this out. And I look forward to seeing your suggestions, comments in the description of the uh, description in the comments. Yeah, it's almost bedtime. I got to work tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I look forward to seeing what comments you leave. And, uh, you know, in the next couple days, I'll have to know Mirage Seven Seas hasn't given me the blessing yet. Uh, I did send them a, I did send them a email, but I haven't heard back from them yet. So no Seven Seas as of yet. Um, who knows? That could change. You know, I just gotta become a much cuter VTuber. No, I don't want to do that. I'm not gonna do that. CL wouldn't let me do that. She'd be like, don't you be like degrading yourself to the point of becoming a VTuber. Um, anyway, I just have to get a million subscribers. If I had a million subscribers, I could probably do whatever the fuck I wanted and nobody would care. I mean, take a look at the anime man. That dude's got like a million subscribers. He's like freaking getting invited to you know, Kadokawa to do all of their announcements. Now, granted, he can speak Japanese and I can't, but I'm just saying, like, subs allow you to get away with a lot of crap. It's like the rules of the world now. It's stupid. But anyway, that's the way it is. So anyway. <laughs> so sub to the channel if you're watching this and you haven't done so. Although, you know what? Most of your names I all recognize as people that are subscribed to the channel and, like, comment all the time. So... It's probably not. You're probably also subscribed. But if you're not, for some reason, Jesus, click that button. Come on. Um, you know you had fun here too. Anyway. Um, <laughs> good night, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will, uh, I'll probably see you next week. Because I, like I said, I kind of want to make these a weekly thing. So uh, until then, bye-bye for now.